Hey there, my name is Helper Wesley, and today I'll be going in depth explaining the platform and platformer behaviors. Starting with a blank scene, the first thing I'm going to do is set up a grid that matches the tile set I'm using. I'll create the character and give it a couple of animations, labeling them idle and run so that we can use those later to change the animations. I'm going to go to behaviors and add the platformer character behavior. We have the acceleration and deceleration, which determine how quickly your character speeds up and slows down. You can click this checkbox to tell it to allow your character to grab onto ledges. You can click here to turn on and off the default controls, which are the arrow keys and spacebar to jump. Next, you've got the grab offset, which will help determine the position when the character grabs. Then you've got gravity, jump speed, ladder climbing speed, and then falling speed. And then finally, you have the maximum speed your character will go at, the maximum slope angle they'll go at, and then jump sustain time, which determines how noticeable your variable jump height is. Next, I'm going to create the ground using a tiled sprite. Obviously, I'll call the ground ground and set the dimensions to 18 by 18 because I chose the tiniest tile set in the entire world. And then I'll place these two into the scene and build a little spot to jump around in. I'll use sprites for these end caps because they don't need to be tiled sprites and place these in as well. And then I'll create a ladder. So the platformer character can actually interact with these sprites. They need the platform behavior, which comes with a grab offset of its own, whether or not this object should be allowed to be grabbed, and then the three different kinds of platforms, which are platform, where the collision mask acts as a barrier that doesn't allow the character to go through it, the jump through platform, you're able to jump through the bottom and land on top of it, and finally the ladder, which is a ladder. For the ground, I'm just going to give it the platform behavior. And then I'll give the same behavior to the other two ground objects. And I'll go to the ladder's tiled sprite and give that one the ladder platform behavior. And then I'll create two sprites and a tiled sprite for a rope that goes horizontally across that I'm going to use for the jump through platform. I'll just place them in the scene. But we can't just give these the jump through platform behavior because the platform behavior works off collision masks and tiled sprites don't have a collision mask that you can edit. So the character would just be floating on top. We're going to create a sprite object and call it hidden platform. Pick any kind of image for this because it doesn't matter. Turn off ledges can be grabbed and then pick the jump through platform option and then hide it when the scene starts. And now we'll turn off the grid and freehand this. We'll stretch these out into shape so it makes sense with the scene open up the properties panel and get it right to the pixel. And then if we press preview, we have a character that can walk around. But the character looks a little stiff, so we're going to give it some animations. We'll add another animation and call it jump, and we'll add a second image to the run animation so it actually does something. And make sure that we set it to loop. The default setting for this is 0.08, which if we preview it, you'll see is really fast. So we're going to change that to 0.2. I've also edited the character's collision mask to make it make more sense with the character's shape. And now we go to the event sheet and create a group and call it character animation. We'll add a condition, click on the player object, and because the player object has the platformer behavior, then we get shown a bunch of options related to that behavior. We're going to pick is jumping. And then for an action, we're going to search animation and pick to change the animation by its name, this one being jump. And then in a new event, we'll add if the character is moving, copy and paste the animation change down and change it to run, add the condition once. So it only changes to this animation once rather than infinitely trying to do it while you're jumping. And then we'll copy the same event over, but invert both of the conditions. So if those things aren't happening, then it will change the animation. And add a final condition, is on floor. So if the player is jumping, it will play the jump animation. If the player is running, it will play the run animation. And if the player is on the floor and not doing either one of those things, then it will just play the idle animation. 
we'll call this section change animation, and then we'll make another section of events and call it flip character, and set it up so that if the player is pressing left, then the character sprite will go to its unflip position. If the player presses right, then the character will flip. A quick side note because you're probably curious, the events that you see up top there are the camera controls, where the camera zooms way the heck in, we hide the block we want hidden, and then without condition, the camera follows the player. And then if we press preview, we see our lively character walking around and interacting with the platforms that we put in scene. So those are the basics, but once you get the hang of the platformer behavior and the engine itself, you can start adding effects and particles and make your character really feel alive. Which is too much to cover in this tutorial, but we will definitely cover that in another video. As always, comment down below and tell us what you think we should make next. Maybe we'll add it to the pile. I have been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.